artists from the planet. This one straight to a boy neck. You better pray set no connect. Left boy a shield and a friend. I your P45 if you can Fire red, fire red, fire red, fire red, fire red, Youngest of nine, uh, his name is Glenn Jones, Glenn Philip Jones. Now you know my middle name. But no, I was uh, I was raised in the church. I started off singing gospel. My mother was uh, a missionary and evangelist, and uh, I grew up learning about music in church. And uh, when I got a little older, I started singing with the group in Jacksonville, Florida. And we were like an uh, opening act for all of the you know, great gospel groups you know, in, in the United States. And I started touring when I was like 11, 12 years old, you know, during the summer, you know, uh, summer break. Uh, and I did that for a while, and when I got to be about 14 years old, I formed a group uh, called The Modulations out of Jacksonville, Florida. And, uh, you know, I wrote, I started writing at the same time, I was about 14, 14, 15 years old. And by the time I reached the age of 17, I met Reverend James Cleveland, who was a very famous, well-known gospel singer. And he heard some of my music, and he signed me to a record deal. He was part of uh, a record company called Sephora Records. Yes. And uh, I ended up going to uh, California to record uh, an album. Uh, as a matter of fact, he produced the album, and I recorded my first album in uh, uh, RPM, Ray Charles' studio, in uh, Los Angeles, and uh, wrote another album, a second gospel album, and uh, Norman Connors great jazz musician in the States who heard my gospel and uh, he wanted to uh, feature me on one of his records. So he flew me out to California and uh, I uh, went out and I did a song called Melancholy Fire, which was the uh, second single from uh, Take It to the Limit album. And from there, the record popped off with Top 15 or whatever. And uh, I started getting an offer, so I got an offer from RCA Records to, uh, to sign a record deal. And that was the beginning of my second career. Wow, that's a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did your family feel about you coming, well, singing, coming out of the church? They, they always supported me. My mother was was an amazing woman. You know, she was really my, my support. The reason why I was really doing music was because of her support, because my father, he was a little more strict. You know, I was a young youngster and he didn't want me traveling all over the world. But, uh, 
she said uh, she would tell me when it was time for me to go on the road. She said, well, Glenn, just go pack your bags. I don't have any good father. I got that. Man. Yeah, she could talk to him and make everything all right. But uh, they were proud. And I guess uh, the main thing that uh, they were proud about is that even though I was doing secular music, I was very uh, lyric conscious. And I was very concerned about the type of lyric that I was singing because I wanted to be positive and not nothing. And it, you know, you can do love songs like that, you know, without, you know, degrading women or whatever. And that's what I've always done. So my family was cool. Who or what inspired you to write and who were your colleagues at the time? Um, well, growing up, I wasn't allowed to listen to R&B, so, you know, yeah, your lyrics, so I, uh, I listened to a lot of gospel, I to show the season, Mike Cousins, Joy, uh, James Cleveland, Andre Crouch, all that kind of stuff, and then I also had my little stash hidden in my room, you know, my, my, my stash of uh, 45s is what we used to call it, 7 inch, you know, uh, a vinyl, you know, and uh, I would sneak and listen to that while my parents were going to the grocery store or something like that. I was inspired by that, like Marvin Gaye, uh, Donnie Hathaway, Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, uh, so many great artists. And uh, as I began to uh, get older, I wanted to uh, do something different. And uh, as far as my writing, I wanted it to be very contemporary. I wanted to hear my music, you know, from my uh, from a uh, production standpoint of being like a holiday, just great production. And back in those days, they didn't spend money on gospel like that. No. They didn't spend money to produce something, produce it well. So when I got a chance to make that transition, that's what I did. And uh, I, I've enjoyed, you know, uh, a vast amount of different genres, you know. Uh, I love Ray Charles. I love Dion Warwick. I love uh, uh, Gladys Knight. It's a temptation. So many people. So back then, there was so much to be inspired from musically, you know, about, yeah, yeah, back in those days. Why is music important to you? Yeah. Why was music important to you? I don't know. I mean, when I discovered that I could sing around four years old, I guess maybe because it was something that was mine, you know, that kind of defined me, kind of uh, gave me my sense of purpose, you know, gave me my self-esteem, something that I knew I was good at, and something that I knew that I wanted to do. Yes, I had the confidence, and uh, I've uh, been blessed to do it ever since. Your music has taken you around the world. Which countries have you performed in, and are there any that are memorable? Um, well, uh, the UK is always memorable uh, because um, so many of my records that weren't necessarily uh, singles or big hits in, in, in the States, they love them over here. You know, like um, I had one song in particular that was my first a single release on RCA, a song called I Am Somebody, and it seems to be almost like an, an anthem over here. And people in the States, I, I, I never play that song in the States. They don't know it like you guys know it over here. So, UK is one of my favorite. Uh, I recently came from South Africa. Loved it, you know, they uh, embraced uh, all of the music that uh, like I said again, a lot of people don't know in the States. You know, the beat cuts, seaside cuts, you know, so I like playing, you know, songs that, uh, that I write that are not necessarily uh, uh, renowned, but they touch me, they move me. And uh, I've been to, you know, to, uh, eight, I've been to Japan, I've been to Croatia, and I've been to Amsterdam, and then I've been to Iraq, I've been to Kuwait, wow. I've been to a lot of How did you find the language for me? Uh, well, um, it was okay because, you know, in traveling those places, I've always had interpreters. Interpreters. You know, I would you know, interpret. But the amazing thing is that 
when I performed in Japan for the first time, every song, every lyric, the audience was singing. I was like, okay, now you guys speak Japanese, and you know, when you have a conversation with someone, this is Japanese, but when the music comes on, we just start singing all the words to the songs. Family family with your favorite song? Uh, I've had some, uh, some great collaborations. Um, the first I started, well, one of the first collaborations I had was with my wife, to with Gina Jones, who's an incredible singer, incredible artist in her own right. And uh, she's worked with uh, so many different people, you know, on her own, but she and I started out in the gospel thing together. Okay. And, uh, we have a lot of similarities. Yeah. You know, I think at some point I've stolen from her and she's stolen from me. You know, just to revive, you know, in that direction. And that's always been cool. Um, I did a record with Dion Warwick, which I love doing that. Sweet lady, beautiful lady. Um, working with her and Burke Bacharach. And then uh, I did a record with, um, I've done two records with Regina Bell. I have a new record with her called Love by Design, which is the title of my new album. Okay. Great. Uh, just recently collaborated with uh, a guy named Nick Colleone, who's like an amazing jazz guitarist, smooth, uh, smooth jazz guitarist. We have a song called You and Me that we recorded. Um, and I've even collaborated with some people, not necessarily on the uh, recording, but on stage. And I used to do a lot of shows with uh, Rita Franklin. You know, we used to come out and I put my tuxedo on. Okay. I sing all of the great duets that she had recorded. I used to go to Detroit to do her birthday parties and we sing it. Uh, we sing at Radio City in New York and we get Caesar's Palace uh, in uh, Atlantic City. I work with Norman Connors. Um, we're with Gene Carr. Matter of fact, when I first saw with Norman Connors, uh, Gene and Norman, they, they used to work together a lot, so when I did the record Mountain High the Fire, actually working on my vocals was Jim Gong. She produced that vocal. Okay. So, that was that the first time you worked? Yes. Which was set maybe the second time you uh, uh, We did it, Gene and I, we did a, a song called Sweet and Wonderful Love on the uh, Columbia uh, record label. Okay. Would you mind sharing the, the current struggles you feel of recording parties? Well, I guess right now the main struggle, it's a struggle but it's also a different kind of freedom. Uh, the struggle is being able to finance your own projects, being able to not only record them but uh, have the marketing and promotion dollars to get it out there, you know, because they're like really, really no more major labels, you know, pretty much. And it's an independent business. But what comes with that is the freedom to be the type of records you do. Be kind of songs, produce, write, and then to even be in control of releasing or when you're releasing. If you can give advice to an aspiring artist, what would you be? I would say keep your day job. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't know. You know, I would. First of all, I would. I would recommend to most artists that they pursue a writing career. Be able to, you know, make your own statement. Be able to say the things that you want to say in your music. And uh, even learn, you know, uh, from a production standpoint, how to produce records. But absolutely, don't forget that this is the music business. Okay, so be about your business. Be on top of your thing. Be on top of your money. You know, because you got a lot of tricky people out there that want to manage you. And, agents that you know, you know and people take you know, they take and uh, sometimes the artists are the last ones to uh, to get paid yeah you know, yes. if they do get paid what artists do you listen to yeah. oh i listen to a lot of classic stuff i listen to you know, like i said before Donnie hathaway and Stevie wonder and Aretha, and, uh, Barbie Womack, I listen to um, there are a lot of uh, uh, female singers now that's killing. You know, Fantasia, Faith Evans, 
you know, I listen to uh, Joe, he's one of my favorite singers, uh, Music Soul Child, my little brother, Dave Hollister, you know, I listen to him. Well, you know, I raised him. Yeah, okay. I, so I, said, I raised that boy, you know, because I found Dave when he was 16 years old in Chicago. And I needed a background singer, and somebody had referred me to him. He came over to the hotel, and sung for me, and that was it. So he toured with me for about five years. Yeah, he used to come to the UK with me, you know, so uh, it was the kind of types of people. What have you currently got in your class? I've got a brand new album, which is entitled Love by Design. And, uh, Love by Design. Love by Design. And that's the album that the Regina Bell is featuring on the first single. Amazing record. Uh, Second single with Nick. Uh, you and me. You and me is actually a song that was recorded uh, years ago, back in the '80s, by an artist named uh, Rocky Robbins. And I always loved the song, so I kind of kept it in my heart. You know, I'm gonna use this one day. My wife used to tell me, "You love that song, right?" Just, but then when I cut it, she loved it. You know? And everybody fell into it, so I got that. And on this album, I was fortunate enough to get um, a lot of support from my peers, like. Uh, I've got uh, Chucky Booker, who uh, produced and he wrote a song on the album. He produced two songs. Uh, I've got a great jazz uh, sax player by the name of Kim Waters. He and I are on a, on, on a song together. And then I have a niece named Yana Crawley. She's an incredible singer. They have this terrible show on the stage. Uh, that, uh, I don't know if it's a gospel show called Sunday's Best. And Kirk Franklin was there. The host, I don't know if he still is or not. But my niece one is on BT. My niece one in 09, her name is Yana Carl, and she won, you know, uh, that uh, she won that event. So uh, we have a song on the album called Family Time, she and I. You know, my wife and I have a song on there called Trust in Me, which is very uplifting and spiritual kind of thing. So, um, I've got a lot of good stuff in my mind. So can I say that it's, it's, I can say that the, the most high is there. Can you say what now? I can say that God is paid up with this strong part in your Oh, husband. always. <laughs> always, you know, because in this business, you know, it, it's, there are a lot of peaks and valleys. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to know, to know that, uh, you know, he's always shown me favor. God is always showing me that. You know, it is because uh, music is, uh, the business of it a lot of times is a uh, youth-oriented kind of business. But uh, I never had to worry about working or making a living. It's always been there for me, so I'm grateful for that. How can the Fire family keep in contact with you? You can get me on Twitter at Real Glenn Jones. You can get me on IG, Real Glenn Jones, on Facebook. Uh, Glenn Jones, uh, and uh, you can get me on my website, glennjonesmusic.com. Please feel free to make a shout out to all to any of your well wishes. Uh, I give a shout out to all of them, which I, I believe I have many, many of them. Um, I think that uh, this past year has been a great year for me. You know, uh, some people that kind of lost track of me, they got a chance to uh, get reacquainted. Because I uh, was featured on TV One, uh, you know, on Song Story. So that's been great. And um, I've always gotten so much support from so many well wishes and people that love me. And uh, they like to tell me, you know, they feel like I'm very underrated. You know, but that's, that's okay because I'm still. I don't think you're okay, well, that's what they like to say. But, uh, Meaning that I rate you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I don't think they mean it from that perspective. I think they mean that uh, because they believe uh, in the talent, you know, in the science of my talent, that, you know, many, 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 many of them should be buying records and be fans. That's so, right, because of the streaming that's going on. Yeah, the streaming is crazy, man. It's, it's like. Uh, I used to enjoy the fact that I did a, I did an album for a record label. I would go out on a promotional tour for 21 days, maybe 30 days, and all these different markets, you know, put it in your face. Brand new record, making appearances, you know, all of the radio stuff and all that. Retail and records, all that was taken care of, and that was different. But, uh, you know, um, sometimes, you, you know, you just gotta switch up the game, you know, you gotta find another way to go about it.
Yeah. And that's what we've done. Yeah. Well, obviously, we're here in London because on Saturday you're going to be at the Giants at Lovers Rock. Yes. How are you feeling about that? Oh, actually, no, let's go back. Okay. Tomorrow night we'll be at Hideaway, right? Right, and we'll be at Hideaway, so that's going to be, um, you know, that's going to be a night of uh, Glenn Jones music, you know, uh, all of the classics that I've done. And like I said, a lot of songs that I'm going to perform. Uh, I don't want to say I've never performed them, but it's been like 25, 30 years because I, you know, I have a different set list, a different playlist in the states. And uh, I'm looking forward to that, you know, you guys like to party and dance, you know, uh, when uh, in the States, they like to be in, in the concert, oh, you know, to sit back in a comfortable chair, you know. So, uh, it's different, but I always enjoy it. Uh, we're going to be doing that, uh, you know, um, songs from, you know, from the 80s on up. And then uh, Saturday for the uh, Lovers Rock Band. Yeah, Giants and Lovers Rock. It's going to be interesting because I'm going to be... Uh, I'm going to be uh, performing songs uh, that I've never performed before, you know. From what film role will they be? Yeah, from Sugar, you know. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, uh, one song in particular that they wanted me to learn is, um, you got a good thing going. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to redo that song. Like that song? Yes, I love that song, you know. And uh, just, you know, feeling that cool West Indian breeze when I'm on the stage, you know? I'm looking forward to it. I'm been searching, I'm so alone. Nobody loves you, nobody to be found. Makes me wonder what I'd do if I never had someone like you, yeah. Giving a shout out to the Fire Red Station. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. you very much for that. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fire, Thank you very much. Fire, 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 f